curious if you wanted to turn the squelch up and maybe uh, um, do MDR on indicators, then it really does become preventive, right? It's just in some mm -hmm. sense there's a determination as to whether if I see some anomaly, it's not a break in, but it's a hint. I know you guys are chasing that down. Sure. That sounds like prevention to me. That's why I always think when we say people are shifting right, I just think it's a different model. Like I always thought the prevent, detect, respond concept was never a really good way of looking at it. Because I always think detection and response when done properly is preventive because you're looking mm -hmm. at things and you're it's catching just, You're things. preventing different things, right? You so like prevent anomalies from building we into want, an Yeah, attack. we want to prevent a business impactful event. Sounds right? like a prevention action to me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It is. You're, you're preventing you know, uh, impact to the business. Yeah. You're not preventing a server from being compromised or a credential from being lost, yeah. which historically is kind of what we talked about when we talked about like an anti-malware prevention platform. Right. It's like, well, we're going to kill it before it runs, which is still good and you still need to do that. It, it yeah. eliminates the, a lot of the noise, as Danny was saying. So I think it does change a little bit, but I agree with you. I mean, you are fundamentally trying to prevent damage to the business. I think when people say, um, well, give up, you're going to get attacked, just respond. I think that's wrong. I think it's more the way modern computing works. Software runs places and it comes from weird places and we enable all of that and we celebrate that. That's what makes the internet work. Mm -hmm. But amidst all that, when something's anomalous, you deal with it. And, and it's not really a hack if somebody's tried something and didn't work. That yeah. seems to me like a normal minute. <laughs> well, it's a pretty common structure we've seen with customers who historically have deployed anti-malware platforms for yeah. years and years and years. Yeah. And then they go, oh, okay, uh, anti-malware doesn't work, right? So, so we're going to deploy EDR. It's a lot of modern next gen, you know, we're going to deploy it. Yeah. And then they deploy it and they get like a thousand alerts. Right. And it doesn't really work for them. And it's like, well, it's not that anti-malware was ineffective. It was effective at doing what it did. And it's just still the does adversaries. What it does. Yeah. And the yeah, adversaries adjusted to that. Yeah. And now there are other things. So to Danny's point around like we talked a lot with customers around allocations, right? Mm. If I give you the buck for security, it's not that you're spending a buck on detection and response, right? You're spending way more than, way less on prevention than you used to, so yeah. that you can spend more on that, yeah. but you don't spend zero yeah. on prevention, because there still is, if we had to have an analyst run down every alert from an anti-malware platform, the SOC would have to be thousands of people and no one could afford it, right? So you do have to eliminate as much of that stuff as you can, so that stuff's still very valuable. It's just, one, the, the adversaries have moved around that, and two, IT has changed a lot. Like most people don't have a perimeter anymore. Most companies are using dozens of systems that don't sit in their data centers and they have no control over, awesome. right? And so it's, those platforms are just less impactful than they used to be, not because they got any worse, but just because the world changed underneath them. Right? You guys are awesome. It seems like you're having a lot of fun. Uh, I suspect this must be, um as much labor of love as, as anything doing this. Yeah. It certainly is. Uh, I think it's an enjoyable it, space to be. It shows. Yeah. You guys seem to really be enjoying it. It's fast moving. Yeah. You know, there, There's so many components to this. And it's something that we haven't talked about so far, but it, it's an important component is, is the cyber skill shortage at the moment. Mm. You know, And so that's a real challenge that, that we kind of relish is going and finding going and finding the right people and then building, uh, building careers for them so that they stay with us. You do a career table over at AFWIC, I would imagine, right? <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, we will grab folks from wherever we can get them, um, but certainly being in San Antonio and having access no, to AppCert cool and having access to NSA was is very it's helpful awesome to us. Right? I, I worked for AT T for many years, and our headquarters was in San Antonio mm -hmm. for quite a few years, so I know that city well. Okay. And it is a very very cool cybersecurity center of excellence because of the military. Yeah, mm -hmm. and becoming more so, and, and the you know, the schools have jumped on board. There's really mm -hmm. good um, uh, cybersecurity courses in the yeah. schools in San Antonio now. So. So it's a great place for us to be, and you know, the, one of the best parts of the job is is kind of building this analyst team and, and you know finding some of the best experts out of out of the security services and the intelligence services, and then and then taking the knowledge and the experience that they have and, and spreading it amongst everybody else in the SOC yeah. as well. You talked earlier about. Um, creating a team that was kind of financially efficient, mm. you know, not, not crazy expensive. And yeah. that's partly how you do it, is you have very highly skilled people that are doing this tier three work at the top of the, uh, at the, top of the operation, but then you have one and twos underneath, and a lot of that work gets automated. You try. But an yeah. important function there is that we turn those ones and twos into level threes, yeah. right? and we make them better. And, and as these guys go on and be leaders somewhere and go and build socks somewhere else and, and you know, take their knowledge to a different organization, organization, we have somebody ready to step into their shoes and, and, and do that level three work. Well, you guys have a great story. I couldn't be more pleased that you came and shared. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming to New York. And Absolutely. Well, thank you for having you. us. As you guys make progress, you come back and visit. Will do. Nice to see you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Good to meet you. And we will see you next time.